The Battle of Mulberg was a large battle that took place near Mulberg in the Electorate of Saxony in 1547, as part of the Schmalkaldic War. The Catholic princes of the Holy Roman Empire led by the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V decisively defeated the Lutheran Schmalkaldic League of Protestant Princes under the command of Elector John Frederick I of Saxony and Landgrave Philip I of Hesse. The battle actually ended the Schmalkaldic War and led the Schmalkaldic League to dissolution. Topic. Background Topic. The spread of the Protestant Reformation in Germany after 1517 represented a major obstacle to the universalistic projects of Charles V of Habsburg. Some attempts at reconciliation between Lutherans and Catholics Diets of Speyer of 1526 and 1529 had in fact resolved themselves into failures, sharpening the mutual opposition between the two opposing sides. The Reformation offered to the most independent German states the pretext for affirm their autonomy not only on the religious level, but also on the political one. For some of these small states the belonging to the Holy Roman Empire a political reality that had been fragmented since centuries was indeed considered no much more than a mere formal act. In 1531 some princes first of all Philip I of Hesse and John Frederick, Elector of Saxony opposed to the Emperor's attempt to restore religious and political unity in the German lands through the re-proposal of the Worms Edict. This led to the formation of the Schmalkaldic League that took that name in honour of the town of Thuringia where the pact was stipulated, a military defensive alliance with an markedly anti-Habsburg and anti-Catholic connotation. Although the birth of a Protestant coalition inside the empire was a great danger for his power, Charles V did not succeed in the first years to fight the League, that in the meanwhile received support from several free cities Bremen, Hamburg, Lübeck, Ulm, Strasbourg, wishing to affirm their independence from the central power. The Protestant princes could also count on the support of the Kingdom of France, Charles's main foreign enemy. In need of the military support of the German states in his war against the Ottoman Turks in the eastern regions of his lands, the emperor chose not to oppose the League and to grant wide autonomy to it. The Protestant leaders were therefore left free to support the Reformation and to fight the power of the Catholic bishops in the lands they controlled. The conditions that forced Charles V to accept the action of the League changed after few years. In 1544 the signing of the Treaty of Crepy ended after decades the conflicts between the Emperor and Francis I of France for the control of the Italian peninsula. After the treaty, the League lost the French support. Martin Luther's death in 1546 and the temporary break of the Turkish threat in the East also put Charles in the best possible condition to focus on the internal enemy that endangered the religious and territorial unity of Imperial Germany. The chance to make the conflict begin was given by the rivalry between the elector of Saxony John Frederick I and his cousin Maurice, both belonging to the House of Wetton. Despite his Protestant faith Maurice that in 1542 had refused to join the Schmalkaldic League invaded in the year 1546 the lands owned by his rival, receiving the help of Ferdinand I, younger brother of Charles V. When the attack begun the elector's armies were in Württemberg, but they managed to move to the occupied lands and to reject the attack. The Emperor decided to take advantage from the divisions between the Protestant armies and joined the war in 1547. He occupied Ulm and Württemberg and defeated the Palatine Elector, forcing him to surrender and to leave the League. With the beginning of the spring Charles then marched toward Saxony to help Maurice's army and to end his clash with John Frederick, last Protestant prince still opposing him. <laughs> Battle. The Emperor Charles was suffering of gout at that time and his army had to face the desertion of the papal soldiers that helped him in the first part of the campaign. In addition to this, the Saxony elector's army was bigger than the Charles's. 1. John Frederick though took the decisoon to split his forces. Hoping to encourage a Protestant and anti-imperial uprising in Bohemia, he deployed a large portion of his troops in this region. He had also left some small detachments to protect the most vulnerable Saxon cities in order to prevent the entry of the enemy army from the south. With the purpose of reaching the well-defended stronghold of Wittenberg, the elector then marched towards north, abandoning his position in Meissen and camping at the end of April at the town of Mulberg, leaving only a few defense troops on the bank of the Elbe River, that he considered too wide to be easily crossed by the imperial forces. Charles V arrived on the river leading his army on the evening of 23 April. 
Despite the contrary opinion of his generals, he decided to attack the enemy forces, that were resting just a few miles away. At dawn of 24 April the first avant-guards of the Imperial Army moved looking for a way to make all the army cross the river. Helped by the surprise and by the dense fog that had risen from the river, small groups of Spanish and Italian veteran soldiers managed to swim through the river and to eliminate the few Saxon troops that were guarding the other side. Meanwhile some troops of the Tercios of Lombardy and Naples, that were the most experienced soldiers in the Charles's army, followed a plan set by Don Fernando Álvarez de Toledo, Duke of Alba and Commander-in-Chief of the Imperial troops in Germany and with the help of a local farmer, they managed to spot a ford to use to make all the army cross the Elbe. In addition to this, some veteran soldiers were able to prevent the crash of a pontoon bridge built by the Saxons, that was immediately used to make all the Imperial cavalry pass safely on the other shore. According to some sources John Frederick had considered an attack from Charles so difficult had he would have imposed to several commanders of his army to go to mass just when the enemy army was about to completing the crossing of the Elbe. The Saxon forces were completely taken by surprise. As soon as he became aware of the fact, the elector first thought was to retreat towards Wittenberg. He soon realized though that his army would be too slow to be prepared to march in a short while, more, he was convinced that only a vanguard of the main imperial army was attacking. So, he ordered his troops to prepare for battle. John Frederick chose to deploy his troops on the border to a forest, in order to prevent a possible encirclement by the imperial cavalry and to have a safer escape route in case of retreat. The Emperor Charles V also reached the battlefield and incited his troops to fight the Protestants. Due to the gout, he was carried to the battle in a litter, rather than on the great warhorse in modern armor depicted by his court painter, Titian and assisted to the battle from the rear. The imperial army was made up of about 16–20,000 men. Among them there were the Tercio of Lombardy, that of Naples, and that of Hungary, led by Álvaro de Sande. The battle began in the evening. The Saxon army, mainly made up of peasants, succeeded in repelling the first assaults carried out by the Hungarian cavalry, but the greatest number and best preparation of the soldiers of Charles, among the best in the world at that time, decided the fate of the clash. The emperor had placed his cavalry on the two sides of his army. The right wing, under the direct command of the Duke of Alba, was heavier than the left one, led by Maurice of Saxony. Once the fragile wings of the Saxon army were defeated the infantry tercios, placed at the center, had a good game in breaking the enemy resistance, forcing the Protestants to retreat through the adjacent forest. The elector of Saxony showed great courage on the battlefield but was wounded in the face and captured by the imperial troops. The main part of his soldiers were chased and killed or captured. Some sources report that the Emperor Charles V commented the victory with the sentence Vine, Vy Vencio Dios in Spanish. I came, I saw, and God won." Paraphrase of the famous exclamation pronounced by Julius Caesar. <laughs> Aftermath The battle ended with a complete defeat of the Saxon army which suffered severe losses, estimated at around 2,000 to 3,000 men. In addition, the Protestants suffered the almost complete capture of their artillery, ammunition, and banners, many soldiers also ended up prisoners. On the imperial side the victory, instead, had the small cost of around 50 soldiers killed. John Frederick was responsible for not preparing an adequate defense on the River Elbe, that could have prevented the imperial troops crossing it. His surrender symbolically sanctioned the end of the Schmalkaldic League. Charles decided to spare his life but he had to exchange it with the capitulation of the stronghold of Wittenberg. He was condemned as a heretic and imprisoned, and was forced to leave the electoral privilege to his cousin Maurice, which helped the imperial victory was prized with the control of the electorate of Saxony. John Frederick was later released in 1552, two years before his death. The surrender of Philip of Hesse that soon followed ended the Schmalkaldic War, but the Protestant problem remained unsolved. Many of the princes and key reformers, such as Martin Bucker, fled to England, where they directly influenced the English Reformation. The peace reached between Catholic and Protestants in Germany Augsburg Interim, 1548, was not enough to bring peace inside of the empire and only in 1555 the Peace of Augsburg stated the end of the religion wars in the empire, allowing each ruler to choose between Catholicism and Lutheranism. That principle ended the project to reunite Germany under a single religious confession. The town of Mulberg hosts a small museum dedicated to the battle. 
Topic. See also. Topic. Charles V, Holy Roman Emperor. Electorate of Saxony. Schmalkaldic League. Equestrian portrait of Charles V. Topic. Notes. Topic. Topic. References. Topic. History of Hungary. Book Series 10. History of Hungary, 1526 to 1686. First book. Editor in Chief Paul Z. Sigmund Pock. Editor Agnes Varkanyi R. Academia Kiado. Budapest, 1985. ISBN 9630509296. Blockmans, Vim. Emperor Charles V, 1500 to 1558. Translated by Azola van den Hoven Vardon. New York, Oxford University Press, 2002. ISBN 0 340 73110 9. De Leva, Giuseppe. 1867. Storia documentata di Carlo V in relazione all'Italia. Documented history of Charles V in regard to Italy. In Italian. 3. Venice, P. Naratovic Premium Topography. Gerosa, Guido. 1989. Carlo V. Un sovrano per due mondi. Charles V. A sovereign for two worlds. In Italian. Milan, Mondadori. ISBN 88-04-33026-0. Oman, Charles. A History of the Art of War in the Sixteenth Century. London, Methuen & Co., 1937. Robertson, William I, 1824. Storia del Regno dell'Imperator Carlo V, History of the Kingdom of the Emperor Charles V. 3, Milan, N. Betani Publisher. Smith, Henry Preserved, 1920. The Age of the Reformation. New York, Henry Holt & Company, Tracy, James D., 2002. Charles V, Impresario of War. Cambridge University Press. ISBN 0-521-81431-6. External links Topic. Media related to Battle of Mulberg at Wikimedia Commons